Hi, this is Richard from Boat Fittings, and this is part two of our video guide on complete boat wiring from scratch. So if you haven't seen part one, please go back and watch that first. But we'll carry on here. What we did last time is we in, talked about the main battery leads, the uh, master switch panel, buzz bar and main switch panel. So one thing I noticed at the end of the last video was when I put this uh, heavy duty battery lead into the buzz bar, there wasn't a good fit when I tried to put this uh, plastic cover on. So what I'm going to do first is just sort that little issue out. little battery cover here just won't seat home with the way things are. So what I'm going to do is put a different end terminal so yeah, you can see the size of the hole in the end of the terminal. It's a bit on the bit oversized for what we need, really. There we go. So even my fanciest set of wire strippers won't go big enough to deal with this uh, heavy duty terminal. So I'm gonna do this by hand with a Stanley knife. So I have found here a terminal which will go on happily onto the pin of the buzz bar. It will go nicely as well over the copper. And importantly, it will go and fit within the plastic cover pieces as well. So what I've got here, I've got a little soldering station holding the end of the wire. I've got my trusty Heiko uh, soldering iron. I've got a, a, a big fat tip on it and I'm going to tin this copper wire. I'm expecting this to take a little while because uh, it's a big wire to get the heat into. Okay, that's pretty flooded now. Just want to keep going until I see some evidence of flow of the solder particularly at the back end. Ah yeah, I can see some flow at the back end now. It'll be difficult for, to pick up on the video, but I can see flow of solder. Okay, so having let that cool down, I can now give it a push and pull and I can tell I've got a really firm connection of the terminal. So what we're doing in this next part is looking at wiring from the leads, the battery leads that we were looking at last time with the buzz bar and the main battery switch, um, getting power from those to the main switch panel. And one key thing that I need to point out is we need to think about the capacity of the wire to the switch panel. Because if we look at this, we've got six switches. Each of those have a five amp fuse. So in theory, you know, unlikely, but in theory, we could be running five times, sorry, six times five amps, which is 30 amps in total. And if we didn't put a thick enough wire to the switch panel and we we're running everything at once, we could be overloading that wire, making it hot, melting it, causing issues. This is 10 gauge wire, 10 gauge copper wire, which is rated at 30 amps. What we're also going to be looking at is installing our first component, which is going to be this cabin light which is going to get mounted under here. Now just to help with the routing of the wiring and keeping it in place, I'm going to use these plastic clips which will screw to the plywood. And then we're going to use a tie wrap which can secure the wires to the clip. I'm going to use the top run for the main feed wires which are going to go to the inputs of the switch panel and I'm going to use this bottom run for all the individual return negatives to the buzz bar. I've actually decided I'm going to move this main battery switch to the other terminal just to make the routing a little bit easier. So just coming back to the switch panel itself the right hand side here is going to be the positive feed. Each individual switch has a positive wire 
which will power the item itself. Take this as an example, this, this light here, the positive is going to come from this positive lead from the switch panel. The negative is going to make its own way back to the buzz bar. And this, just to reiterate, this negative of the switch panel is just to deal with illumination of the switches. So just for now, and just for simplicity, all we're going to worry about is getting our positive wire connected to this terminal here and our negative wire connected to this terminal here. So we will deal with that and then we'll come on to the light that we looked at earlier. So on the switch panel we've got these standard 6mm spade connectors, very commonly used. I have bought these yellow terminals which in theory are fine to go with 10 gauge wire. As it happens this wire I've got is uh, silicone uh, shielded and it just doesn't quite fit into the insulation bit. So I'm going to use these terminals without the yellow insulation on. So these spade terminals, the insulation will pull off with a firm pull. So I've got my terminals ready for soldering. I'm going to strip about six or seven millimeters of the end of the wire So a bit of a twist just to get it compacted. There we go. So I have got my wires soldered coming through this hole in the in the woodwork and these will push onto the switch panel. They want to be reasonably firm, but not too firm. You might need to adjust them with a pair of pliers or a screwdriver just to get the right kind of fit. And now what I'm gonna do is start securing them to the clip. So I'm gonna give these a bit of headroom And there we go, I've got my main wires to the panel. So this little selection box of terminals has been really handy. For the red one, we've got quite a large, one with quite a large hole to fit onto the main switch, um, but a reasonably small entrance for the wire, so that should be fine. And then for the buzz bar, we've got a one with a slightly smaller hole, which fits neatly onto the M6 screw, but with a suitable size for the black wire. So I'm going to get on and solder those. Now I'm aware that some of these terminals are, you know, equally good for crimping or, you know, some people would prefer to crimp them. But to say I have never had a problem with a soldered terminal myself. I have had problems with crimped terminals. Okay, so all I've got to do now is get these connected up and secure them with cable ties. So at this stage, just as a bit of a recap, we have got the main battery leads, we've got the positive one going to the master switch which can turn the whole boat electrics off out of the other side of the master switch we're just looping round and coming through this hole. The negative lead is going to the buzz bar. We're taking a, a, a large wire from the buzz bar, which is going through again to the through the hole up to the switch panel. The rest of this buzz bar is ready to accept any negatives from any of the things we're going to use, like bilge pumps, lights, and so on. We've got these wires coming through the hole and onto the top main connections of the switch panel. 
the positive one is the main feed to everything we're going to use on the boat electrically. The negative from the switch panel is really just about powering the illumination uh, of the switches of the panel. So this is going to be screwed to the ceiling and I've had a few people when they bought these haven't quite realised what you have to do is you pop out the um, plastic cover which some people are a bit wary of doing then you expose the fixing holes here you can see the LEDs inside the light these are kind of fit for life LEDs um, but anyway we're going to put the screws through fix this to the ceiling and then we can pop the cover back on so first things first so I'm going to extend the wires on this lamp so I'm going to trim the existing wires down quite a lot so I'm just running with my slightly thicker newer wires for most of the run no particular reason for doing that other than neatness I'm going to use a little bit of heat shrink always got to remember to put that on first this makes life a bit easier so let's just tin these wires usually I have some pre-tinned wire handy which I prefer to use on, on boats I haven't got any with me today so just uh, pretend I had pre-tinned wire for this job So in the end I actually moved these clips onto this bulkhead uh, for neatness. So the wires come from the lamp up through the ceiling, back down through a hole and disappear through this hole in this bulkhead into the engine bay area. So we have got the two wires from the light, we've got the red and black. The black the negative is going to come along through these clips and into the buzz bar. So let's take this cover off and what we've got are these um, screw connectors. So I'm going to choose one of them. I'm going to choose the fourth one along which I'll, the reason for that I'll come back to. Okay, so we've got the little screw. So I'm using one of these round terminal connectors which I'm going to solder to the wire and I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink on to finish it off. And I'm going to strip the end of the wire. Just about four or five millimetres. So, I very nearly forgot to put the heat shrink on, which would have made life a bit harder. So I'm going to put these, uh, put the terminal onto the wire. I'm using this pair of clamps. I don't often use two clamps at the same time, but it's sometimes when things are a little bit small and fiddly, these make life a bit easier. Okay, that has taken well. So just popping the heat shrink on and we're gonna get that shrunk down. So that looks great. So just earlier I said I was gonna use the fourth uh, 
terminal connector on the buzz bar. And the reason for that is I just thought I'd have some relationship between the switch panel switches and the buzz bar. So we've got, at the starting from the bottom, we've got AUX2, AUX1, bilge pump, cabin light is the fourth one in. Uh, so I thought I might just kind of use that one, two, three, four as some meaningful relationship. It's not that important, but that's what I've chosen to do. So I'm just going to screw this terminal to the buzz bar. Okay, so the negative wire is done. Now we're going to route the positive wire through, through this hole. Turn out the other side into the cabin. So the positive wire wants to come on to the fourth switch up on the back of the panel. Now there's, they've provided this tail, which I could connect to, I could solder up to, but that's just a bit messy. I, compared to just putting a spade connector on the end of this wire that we can push directly onto the switch panel. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that's all good. So now we're just going to push that spade connector onto the switch. That's gone on quite nicely. And then we'll do these bits of uh, tie wrapping. So just to recap, we've put the interior cabin light up here. We've fed the wires effectively up through the headlining and back down and they come into the uh, engine bay area through this little hole. The negative wire goes to the buzz bar. We've just chosen an appropriate uh, point on the buzz bar. The positive wire gets fed around this side and comes to this terminal on the switch panel. What I'm going to do though, we've got these stray tails from the other points on the switch panel, which are, you know, a danger at the minute they could short circuit to something so I'm going to take these off first I'll do that with a pair of pliers because they're quite stiff so what I'm going to use to power this up I've got this uh, power supply which replaces what you'd have on the boat which would be, would be a battery now I have got this switched off at the moment the thing I should point out is whenever you're working with a battery you've got to be very careful about short circuits. If you put a spanner across from a, accidentally across both terminals of a battery, you're going to create sparks and heat and it's not going to be any good. So uh, just be careful to keep your positive away from your negative at this stage. So I'm going to just clip these onto the battery leads. So this is going to supply me, supply our boat system with 12 volts. I'm going to now turn that on. So we've now got 12 volts coming to the system and the moment of truth, if I turn on the cabin light switch, yes, we have light. So we can turn that off here. We can also turn, this has a switch on the light itself. So happy with that, we've got the first component installed. So that's where we're going to end this part two of this series on boat electrical wiring from scratch. I hope you can see that it, these things are pretty simple when you break it down step by step. I hope you're starting to find this guide useful. Um, if you are finding it useful, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. And in the next part, we're going to start to look at bilge pumps, a couple of different bilge pump types and float switches and how to get those installed as part of this system.